بسم الله والحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salutations upon the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam and upon his family and his companions and upon all those who follow upon his guidance and to the establishment of the last day to proceed ikhwan فَنُقَدِّمُ إِلَيْكُمْ شَرْحًا لِلشَّيْخِ حَفِظَهَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الشَّيْخِ لَبِيبِ إِبْنِ نَجِيبِ اليمني حفظه الله وسلمه الله من كل سوء ومكروء في فن الفقه في فن الفقه. So now, يا إخوان, we present to you an explanation given by our Sheikh Labib ibn Najib al-Yamani, حفظه الله تعالى, as he is going over a small introduction of the science of al-fiqh. وكما هو معلوم أن هذا الشيخ هو متخصص في مذهب الإمام الشافعي ولكنه إمام في الفقه إمام في الفقه وهو متمكن في ماذا في جميع المذاهب ولو يتخصص في مذهب الإمام الشافعي حفظه الله تعالى حفظه الله تعالى So as we mentioned many times يا إخوان this particular sheikh here he specializes in the Shafi'i Madhab. However, he is a scholar of Al-Fiqh. He is a scholar of the Madhahib, the particular various schools of thoughts, schools of thought. Although he, is a, he specializes in the Shafi'i Madhab, فَنَسْتَفِيدُ مِنْهُ كَثِيرًا خَاصَةً فِي بَابِ الْفِقْ فِي بَابِ الْفِقْ So we benefit from him abundantly or in abundance, especially in the science of Al-Fiqh. فلذلك يا إخوان ماذا أحببنا أن ننشر ماذا شروحه في الفقه في الفقه وفي غير الفقه. So for this reason it pleases us to share some of the benefits and the lessons and explanations of this particular sheikh. واستأذننا عنده بأن نترجم دروسه فأجاب طلبنا قائلا نعم. And we have asked our Shaykh for permission to translate his classes and explanation to our particular, uh, to the people of our lands and the likes. And the Shaykh has answered our request by saying, yes, you guys have the uh, permission of the authority to do that from us. فتح القريب المجيب. So the Sheikh is explaining فتح القريب المجيب مقدمة في الفقه. And he's going over the introduction of الفقه. وهذا هو درس الأول. وهذا هو الدرس الأول. نعم. لا يرى أن صلاة الوتر مستحبة أو واجبة. الجمهور يرون أنها مستحبة. إذا هذا اجتهاد أو قطعي؟ ها؟ هذا اجتهاد. أبو حنيفة رحمه الله تعالى يرى أن صلاة الوتر مستحبة أو واجبة. So he says first, Imam Abu Hanifa رحمه الله تعالى he has the opinion that performing the al-witr, performing the witr is an obligation. So he brings us the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa رحمه الله تعالى. He says, Imam Abu Hanifa he has the opinion that the witr is obligatory. He says, however, the jumhur, the majority of the people of knowledge, have the opinion that the witr is recommended. He says, so is this from the avenue of al ijtihad or is this al qatari Is this ijtihad or is this al qatari He says, rather, as he's asking the students in the lesson, he says, this is from the avenue of al ijtihad he says, because it has therein, where some scholars have this opinion, and other scholars have that opinion, so it's not something that's qatariyan, it is ijtihadiyan.
He says another example that I wanted to mention is the ghusl on the day of Jumu'ah. Taking the full body bath or wash on the day of Jumu'ah. He says the majority of the ulama, they have the opinion that washing the body, a full body wash on the day of Jumu'ah is mustahab. It is recommended. However, some scholars have the opinion that it is obligatory. He says the question once again is, is this ijtihadiyan or qat'iyan? Is this something that the scholars different from the ijtihad or is it something that is absolute? It is ijtihad or is it qat'iyan? He says yes, it is something that is ijtihadiyan. He says a third example. He says, the third example I want to pose to you is zakatu huli al mar'a. Is when the woman gives zakat from her, her jewelry, her chains, translate as note, her chains or her rings or her bracelets. When the woman gives zakat on her jewelry. He says, he says, when the woman, she has jewelry, is it obligatory upon her to give zakah on this jewelry, amla, or not? Imam Malik and Imam Ahmad and Imam Shafi'i, they have the opinion that it is not compulsory. It is not obligatory upon the woman that she gives the zakah on her jewelry. But Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he has the opinion that it is obligatory upon the woman to pay zakat on her jewelry. He says, is this qat'iyan or is this ishtihadiyan? Is it something that is absolute? There's no difference about it? Or is it something that has ishtihad? He says, this is something that is also ishtihad. He says, ishtihadi. Is this clear? He says, so the legislations of Al-Islam, Al-Ahkamu Shari'iyya, the legislations of Al-Islam, the rulings of Al-Islam, they are comprised of that which is Qat'iyyan, that which is absolute, no doubt about it, and that which is Ijtihadiyan, that which has some ikhtila, some differences of opinions. So he says, the science of Al-Fiqh, Mada yadrus? What is being taught when the person studies al-fiqh? What is he actually studying? He says, in the science of al-fiqh, does fiqh teach? Are you studying the legislations that is qat'iyan or the legislations that is ijtihadiyan? Those legislations and rulings that are uh, absolute, there's no place for a difference of opinion there. Or those affairs that have al those affairs that have some differences of opinion. So we ask the question a second time. Does fiqh teach when the person studies fiqh? Is he studying al those affairs that are qat'iyan? That is absolute, no difference of opinion whatsoever. Or those affairs that are, you find therein, ishtihadiya. That some scholars have this opinion, other scholars have that opinion, they differ in this regard. He says, when you open the books of Al-Fiqh, do you find therein those affairs that have differences of opinion connected to them? Or do you find those affairs that it is unanimous regarding this? It is unanimous regarding this. He says the answer is al ijtihadi that fiqh you're learning or it teaches those affairs that have therein the place of differencing that some scholars have this opinion and some scholars have this opinion. So he says al fiqh he says it is going over the legislations of the Sharia those legislative affairs 
that are practical. Al amaliyat alati tariqatu al ijtihadi. Those affairs that are practical, that are from the path or the way of al ijtihad. He says, as for those affairs that are qat'iyan, those affairs that are unanimous from the people of knowledge, he said, usually you do not find these affairs. You don't find them really in the books of al-fiqh. He said, there are some books that the scholars of al-Islam, the scholars of al-fiqh, they call kutubun al-ijma'at. Al-ijma'at. Those books that go over those affairs that are unanimous. And these books you find that they focus and concentrate on those affairs that the scholars are unanimous with regards to. He says, but that book, those types of books here are really not books of al-fiqh. He said the books of al-fiqh are talking about those legislative affairs that are practical regarding uh, the issues of al-ishtihad. He says, is this clear? He says, so now we have with us the definition of al-fiqh. The definition of al-fiqh. So he says, and we have mentioned that the definition of al-fiqh is ma'rifatu al-ahkami al-shari'iyyati al-amaliyyati adillatuha al-tawsiliyya. So he says, it is having knowledge of those legislative rulings, those practical legislative rulings, be adilatiha by their proofs, atafsiliya, by their detailed proofs. He said, or you can say, ma'rifatu al-ahkam al-shari'iyya al-amaliyyat al-lati tariqatuha al-ijtihadu. He says, or you can say a similar meaning, and you can say, it is having knowledge of the practical legislative rulings that which is from the route of al-ijtihad he says so this is definition is this clear and you hear one of the students says yes yes sheikh and he says inshallah he says so if you brothers understand that now we will go to the next affair that comes after it. He says, now the next question I pose to you is, how many categories is fiqh divided into? How many categories is al-fiqh divided into? How many categories? Once again, Hafidhullah, he asked the question again. How many categories is al-fiqh divided into? So one of the students says, two categories. The Sheikh says, yes, two categories. What are they? He says, one of the students says, al-fiqh al-akbar. And the Sheikh says, yes, al-fiqh al-akbar, the major fiqh. The major fiqh. And he says here, the intent here is aqeedah. The intent here is aqeedah, the belief. So he says, and the second category is fiqh al-asqar. The minor fiqh. He says the intent here with the minor fiqh is those affairs that are al-amaliyyah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> He says those affairs that are practical. That is talking about the action, the practical action of the person. He says yes, but here we're talking about. He says but here we're talking about al fiqh in the technical al istilahi, the technical sense. 
He says the fiqh that we have just learned uh, a little while ago, briefly, when he says it is ma'rifatul ahkam al-shari'iyatul amaliyati bi adilatiha tafsiliya. He says when it is the knowledge of the practical legislative rulings by its proofs and evidences, by its detailed proofs and evidences. He says this is the fiqh that we're talking about. He said here we're talking about the technical fiqh. We're not talking about fiqh al-akbar, which is the intent of it is the belief. We're not talking about that. He says we're talking about the minor al-fiqh. How many categories here? We're not talking about the major fiqh, which is the aqidah, which is the belief. He says we're talking about al-fiqh al-asghar, the minor fiqh. How many, the which we just learned previously, how many categories is this divided into? He says, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, as he was waiting on the students to answer, but it appears that no one answered. So the Shaykh, he says, Hafid Allah, that al-fiqh is divided into four parts. That al-fiqh is divided into four parts. He says, as for the first part, it is talking about al-ibadat. Al-ibadat. The affairs of worship. The affairs of worship. He says, as for the second category is Al-Mu'amalatu Al-Maliyya. He says, is those affairs, the general dealings regarding one's property and one's wealth. He says, the second category was fiqhu al-mu'amalati al-maliyya. He said, is the fiqh of the dealings of one's property and one's wealth. He said, and the first one once again was fiqhu al-ibadat, al-ibadat, the fiqh of worship. And he said, the third was fiqhu al-usra. Fiqhu al-usra, the fiqh of the family, regarding the family. He says, what does it mean when we say fiqhu al-usra? He says, meaning the legislation and the rulings of the family. He says, as for the fourth category, it is fiqhu al-hudud wal-jinayat. It is the fiqh of the hudud, the, those limits that are set by Allah Ta'ala, wal-jinayat. So he says, as for the fourth category, it is fiqh al-hudud, wal-jinayat, wal-qada, wal-shahadat. It is the fiqh of al-hudud, those boundaries and legislations, wal-jinayat, and al-qada, and al-shahadat, those testimonies. So he says, how many categories are these? He says there are four categories. هذا كتاب فقه هذا كتاب فقه 
So he says, so now when you're studying any book, he says, from the books of Al-Fiqh, he said, you go to the index or the, the table of contents. He said, go to the beginning of the table of contents. He says here, you go to the beginning of the table of contents and it's talking about tahara, purification. He says, and then after tahara, it talks about the prayer. And then after the prayer, it talks about zakah. Then it talks about fasting and then hajj. He says, then after that, you go into the categories of Al-Bayr. You go into the categories of transactions and buying and trading. He says, you go into the affairs of Al-Ijar and the affairs of Al-Sharika. The affairs when you're doing dealings with one another and partnering up to do transactions and the likes. It says, and then after that, it talks about the affairs of al faraid those affairs of inheritance and the likes, faraid It says, those affairs talking about wealth, the inheritance, who inherits, how much we inherit, and the likes. He says, then after that, it talks about something else. He says, then it talks about the affairs of Azawaj, the affairs of marriage, and that which takes place between the couples. He says, and then after that, it talks about the affairs of the Maha. Translators note, when the groom gives the bridal gift to the bride. Talaq, the phrase of divorce. And then it talks about the hadana, the bringing up of the children. And it talks about the affairs of anafaka, of spending on one's family. And then it talks about al idda when the man divorced the wife, the waiting period that she's in, or translators note, when the woman asks. He says, and then after that, it talks about the affairs of the idda when the woman is in her waiting period. He says, this is called fiqh al-usra, the fiqh of the family, fiqh al-usra. He says, and then after that, it talks about the affairs of the hudud. Talks about when the person, something, uh, one of the limbs has to get cut off or the likes. Talking about the, the, the transgression of the one who drinks, intoxications. He says, the punishment of the one who falls into illegal sexual relations. And then after that, it talks about the the affairs of al qada when the person gives legal uh, legal advice and legal affairs is uh, from the qada and the shurut of al qada the conditions that are met for a person to be a judge <laughs> then it talks about the affairs of a shahadat of giving testimonies and witnesses and the the conditions therein and the categories therein He says, is this correct? Yes. He says, then therefore it's a chain. He says, it starts with the affairs of worship. Then it goes to the affairs that are talking about the legislations or the, the general dealings of the person's wealth and those things that are connected to his wealth. Then after that, you go down the chain and it talks about the legislation of the usra, of the family. Then 
Then after that, the affairs of judgment and being a judge and the categories and the affairs of a shahadat, testimonies and witnesses. And then the affairs of al-hudud and the affairs of al-jinayah. So he says, so how many categories once again? He says, there are four, cat four categories of al-fiqh. He says, and it's like that with every fiqh, every book of al-fiqh, generally, generally, umuman, generally, it has these four categories therein. He says, it's going to be in this manner. Umuman, generally. The book of al-fiqh, any book of al-fiqh that you pick up, is going to talk about, firstly, the affairs of al-ibadat, the affairs of worship. Then it's going to talk about the affairs of al-mu'amalati al-maliya, the affairs of one's wealth. Then it's going to talk about the affairs of the family. Then it's going to talk about, lastly, the affairs of al-qada, of being a judge and the lights and testimony and testification and the lights.